Podcast. This is J Train Jared Free coming live from the West Village of Manhattan. We're here every Monday with your emails, your stories, your questions. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's how it works. You tell a friend, a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa, and they tell a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa. All the you know, keep spreading the word. I want to get right to our guest because of all the OKPs, original key players. This is the most key player of all the OKPs. A fan favorite, a favorite of mine, returning to the podcast, Yamanika Saunders. Thank you for yes, coming back. Yes, OKPP, that's OPPP. <laughs> <laughs> also, well, you know I love being here, so. I love having you on. Every week, I get a message. Mm-hmm. When's Yamanika coming back? <laughs> When's Yamanika coming back? I'm, I'm here. like, she's here. Yeah. We got it going. Listen, how are you? What's going on? What's going on in your life? Oh, God. So much is going on. I'm so, like, I shouldn't say this, but I'm so tired. Traveling, filming, writing, working. You are God. doing everything. Like, mm-hmm. legit, I'm watching the Super Bowl, and there's Yamanika in a Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> right. Like, I was like, right. and you know when you see your friend on a, so you're in a thing, you go, ah! <laughs> right. what? And you start hitting people that don't yeah. even know. Yeah. And you're like, and and then it's like more, you were doing a roast of Mr. Peanut. I know. In but- our wildest imaginations, could you ever think that, like, they'd be like, okay, like, I want to hear... I, I would do anything mm-hmm. to have a camera on Yamanika mm-hmm. when they're like, okay, we're going to want you to roast Mr. Peanut. Oh, we did. First of all, I have to say uh, shout out to Jeff Ross, who, like, you know, really put my hat in the ring for that and just, you know, is the roast master general. Yes. And because I've been a part of the roast for so long and, you know, more so now than competing in roasts, I judge the roast. Uh-huh. Um, it was a great opportunity for me to get back in. And actually do some roasting. Um, it was, um, you know, Neil Brennan directed it, which was great. Yeah. Uh, but it was so many uh, amazing uh, comedians on there, like Sarah Tiana. And just like, it was just really <laughs> a great experience. But I don't think they knew how much we could really roast. Right. <laughs> and, right. And, and the whole premise that is balance. it's a roasted peanut. Right. So like, that's the premise. And they're going to mm-hmm. have Mr. Peanut, who's yeah. the... But do they put up a guy in a suit? Like, when you're going to do it, <laughs> who <laughs> are you the the Now, that I don't know if I can say. There definitely okay. is, um, there was definitely some, obviously, there's not a real life peanut right. walking around. Uh, um, so there's CGI at work there. But um, I think what I found interesting was how much fun we had and how great some of the jokes were and then that balance with the Super Bowl and like all the moms and dads watching and they don't want their kids and let's not have like a nipple gate thing again and all right. this and that so I do think they um, skewed more on the PG side which I understand because it is Mr. Peanut sure. but we did see some of the other commercials a little more risque or like oh damn we wish we could have done that so um, but I, I it was it, like as a kid, I grew up with Mr. Peanut. My grandparents right. love peanuts. Well, the whole the, the combination of a kid growing up with Mr. Peanut mm-hmm. and the Super Bowl. Like, yeah. that's the thing. You're in a Super Bowl commercial. Crazy. Like, that's crazy. That was crazy. And then they don't want us to tell anybody that, you know, it wasn't supposed to be a surprise. Right. But I already don't tell people my business, so I forgot about it. And I'm literally <laughs> at the cellar. Yeah. I I think it hit my head like one time that I would make something with the commercials coming up. I was there just eating with them, having a good time, laughing. Left because I didn't think about it anymore. Right. Got in the got in my Uber. The second I got in the Uber, my phone blew up <laughs> like right. crazy. Like I left the second the commercial came on. I was like, <laughs> I yeah. Was I didn't pay any attention. So I was getting all these text messages. The funniest ones were my cousins going. We have a bet that you were in a the Super Bowl commercial. I was like, yeah. And so my cousin was like, yeah, I got money. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> so it was just like, it was really crazy. And my dad was like, obviously my dad's like, you never tell me anything. And I was right. like, yeah, that's the truth. Because <laughs> um, he's the one that's going to tell everybody. Everyone. Right. My dad will tell everybody. And, uh, but yeah, it was fun. Listen, yeah. I was so happy to see it. Everyone needs to go follow Yamanika. I'm pumped you're here. We're going to get into the emails. What's I can't going, wait. What's going on in your personal life? Are you seeing anyone? Are, you know, sometimes you come on this show. Mm-hmm. And we, we, you know, over the course of, like, I wish we had, we should have a flash cut of all the Yamanika <laughs> right, all the Yamanika. episodes. You yes. know, like, where you, are you in a relationship, seeing someone, not mm-hmm. seeing someone? Sometimes it's no, you're off 
of the dudes and sometimes yeah. you're on them and well, we I'm like to check them. in. Right. Well, this time I'm off. Okay. I'm off and um and not even in a bad way. Feeling I, good. I feel good about it. I um you know, here let me say this. I'm saying that I'm off, but I'm not really off. Interesting. I um I letting the world come to you. Yeah, I mean, I got. I'm really doing a lot of great things right now. Like, and I feel really optimistic about things that are happening in my career. And I have a lot of things that I'm working on, stuff that I want to pitch, ideas that I want to mm. create. So, the a relationship right now for me would hold me down, mm. um, in in a way that I don't want to be held down. Now, physically, do I want to be with someone? Sure, like right. sex is not off the table, but I'm not interested in a traditional relationship anymore okay and i had to get to that point um because i it wasn't making me happy seeking relationships wanting that sort of traditional space it it wasn't gelling with who i really was it's interesting it's an in, it's an interesting admission because mm-hmm. i i i feel you in, in, in a certain because i'm i'm on these dating apps and i'm going and there's a moment where i'm going what am i doing here and yeah. then what would it even take me to be in this traditional idea of a relationship that i've been brought up on yeah do i even want that right and i'm like going to europe and this will come out after i'm done with europe i'm like like someone wanted to go on a date this week and mm-hmm. i'm like for what right you know like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think as you get older also you get like you're like yeah, for what? Like you, it's not fresh. It's not new anymore. Right. Um. I think also, you know, t- times are changing. I there's so much, um, you know, and for lack of a better term, there's so much toxic masculinity. I think in the world right now, mm-hmm. as a woman who's independent, smart, um, you know, who has a cape, I have the ability to take care of myself. I'm not really right. looking for somebody to complete me. I'm not interested in, a, in the conversation that is being had by some men about what they want in women. But what I am excited about right now is as much as I'm, again, for lack of a better term, turned off mm. to dating and relationships, mm-hmm. I like the idea that there could be somebody that could make me want to be in a relationship with right. them. And that's what... I'm open to. I love that. Yeah, it is the anything can happen. Mm-hmm. I'm going out. Maybe I'll meet someone. I think that that's probably the defeating part about the apps is it like creates this like win or lose. Thing. I don't do the apps. Right. I stop doing the apps. First of all, there's too many people with um, personality disorders on the <laughs> yeah. apps, and yeah, it's like a breeding ground. You have predator prey too much there. You have a lot of innocent open loving people right. who just don't know where to go to find a partner who wants to give love who wants to be in a romantic loving relationship where they are two people coming together right. and then you have the prey that knows all of those innocent little sheep are out there mm-hmm. and can put on some wool and make it seem like they're also a sheep but really they're just there to take advantage of your insecurities and your vulnerabilities it's a great point because I you know they were created by male nerds Mm-hmm. So if you think about it, like yeah. the male nerd was like, how do I become a stud? Right. So yeah. they were like created this like venue where it's like, I, you know, someone comes on there, honestly, I'd like some love. <laughs> right. And then this yeah. app kind of covers up all their, you know, their shortcomings. Yeah. You know, they can yeah. hide behind a still picture. They can hide behind one line written. Yeah. And then they can go and they can hide behind the idea. I'm looking for something when they're not really looking for anything right. or they're looking for hook up and I'll buy in if I like it. Yeah, right, right, right. And that's what a lot of people do cuz a lot of men do that. We you know, I've been guilty of that where you go you go I of course I'm looking for a relationship, but I I also will get drunk with someone new tonight, yeah. you know, and that's not and you go, well, then you're not, are you looking for a relationship? Well, you know? it's too easy, I think, for men. Because my conversation used to be very much about, like, you know, men need to stop doing this. Men don't need to do that. And now my conversation over time is, and with my new set, which I can't wait to somebody buy it, uh, <laughs> is... Really talking to women and a lot of the things that men get away with is because 
you know that show, The Weakest Link? Yeah. You know, and it's like women, no matter how powerful or strong or independent I am and how much I may seek a man that is a partner and my equal, mm. there are always going to be women who have the same attributes that I have that will still settle for the lowest common denominator when it comes to men. Right. And because of that, the balance oftentimes is off for women um, especially for black women, because we get hit with so many different uh, rocks. You know, there's a problem between black women and black men. Then there's problems with black women, people's perception of black women and our attitudes, our independence. Nobody ever thinks the vulnerability of a black woman, the fact that a lot of black women are independent or do, you know, have to take care of themselves is because of the, you know, systemic racism that we've experienced here, um, also internal um, classism and shit like that. So, you know, having all that stuff going on with me, I'm just like, oh, my God, I don't even want to think about all of that. Right. I just, if I meet a guy and I like him and we want to hook up, hook up, I don't need you to come home with me. I don't need to be in a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And I also don't, at the end of my life, when God asks me what I've done, I don't want to just say I was a wife. And that's not to disrespect any woman who wants to be a wife or a mother. Totally. I have other things that I want to say. But I think that women who do want to be mothers and do want to be wives and cherish that, I feel good for them to go and see God and say, I was somebody's mother. I was somebody's wife. But that's just not for me. Well, it's interesting, especially like taking away the apps takes away a lot of... (laughs) We got a little Actually, spill zone. I need a mother now. Gotta, <laughs> <laughs> mama, mama, I got a little gooey bubble. <laughs> For those listening, Yamanika had a little spillsies. I, I, no, but what you're saying, like, I do understand how the apps makes you go down the road of when you're dealing with someone who you're like, why are they so slippery? I'm acting honest, mm-hmm. and there, and I'm, I'm a smart woman. I'm a smart person. Now I'm dealing with. Why haven't they made a plan? They're, they're, why are they a pen pal? And then you it's go based on well, vanity, right? All and of then, it, and yeah. then you go, then you go down the the road of like, well, it must be this and this and this and this and all these things I've dealt with my whole life. And then you go, you and where this different kind of take where you're like, I'm out there, happens, it happens. Mm-hmm. Like I I I love it, and I I think I need more of it. Because I go, you know, you I go down the rabbit hole of oh my, these things must be wrong with me or what I'm dealing you with in the people. There. You'll get there. I only am getting there because I'm getting older, mm. right? There, and it is true. As you age, there's more. You, it's like blinders, right? Mm-hmm. And you start to see where. Oh, it's it's unfortunate that in, you know, most of us in our teens or twenties don't have the wisdom that we have as we get into our 30s and our 40s, right? right? Because then you're like, if I had all of this wherewithal, I could have been using that back then. But then also there's something good about that. I stopped the apps because of what I said before about the predatory ways. Right. But also because, and I say this a lot to uh, black women, obviously, because there's a lot that works against black women. But I also say this to Mm. non-traditional women who are outside of that category of what it means to be hot and beautiful, especially in this society. And that beauty and the standards of what it means to be a a beautiful woman is something that like Cornel West said in, in Race Matters when he talks about women as commodities to men. Mm. And I always tell women, it's like, if you are in, if you are a commodity to a man, you are a possession. And because you are his possession, he then wants to make you the most valuable possession Mm. that's there. Not because he wants you to have that value, but whatever high value you have, you give more value to him because he's trying to outvalue other men. And that's where the apps come in, where you're looking at it in a commoditized way. Of course. Right, because it's a thing on a page. So why would you put yourself out there like that? Right. I kept putting myself... I am a smart, Mm -hmm. dynamic woman. I am unique. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any woman like me, thinks like me, moves like me. I am an asset to Mm -hmm. any man that would want to be in a relationship with me. That has not stopped me from putting myself with men who did not see my value or tried to break me down so that I wouldn't see my own value, that I was an asset to them. I have never been with a man that has utilized 
my abilities in the correct way and valued me. So when women put themselves on these apps, it, it takes even more away from you because a man is instantly just looking at how much you weigh, what you look like, what you had, the how resume. young, like, all of that. And it doesn't say who Britney really is or right. who I mean, Sarah really is. I do a joke on the, uh, I do a joke that I've been doing for a while where it's like me on the, me judging the person on the app versus if I met that same person in person, yeah. I'd be so much more open. I'd be like, wow, I've never been with this type of person or this type of background or this type, you know, because you meet them and then you go, well, the other, the other stuff, you, you learn the other stuff along the way after you already yeah. like them. I, I had this, uh, I, I think we need to do a remix of I'm Every Woman to uh, <laughs> I'm a Dynamic Woman. Yeah. It's changing. It. I'm a dynamic I'm woman. It's all in, in me. me. I love that part. I love singing that. Me. <laughs> me. Let's go to the emails. You ready? Yes, I'm excited. Everyone go follow Yamanika at Yamanika on Instagram, do. on TikTok, on all the good stuff. Yamanika is so fantastically funny. It is one of, you are one of my you, favorite baby. people to see, be around. You're one of my favorite I, people. I love you know how much I you. love you. I'm such a fan. It goes, it's the mutual admiration society. So listen, let's get to the emails. Okay. Jtrainpodcast at gmail.com. I love these emails because some of them are like, I, I we're all over the board today. Okay. Is this cheating? Uh-oh. <laughs> Jared and, yeah, and guest, I'm a 24-year-old female, have been dating my boyfriend, 22-year-old male, for two and a half years. Okay, so the timeline kind of matters mm-hmm, here. Mm-hmm. 24-year-old female, she was in college two and a half years ago. I'm assuming college-ish. He's 22, he was in college, so they met in college. Okay. Um, in that time, with most of my uh, most of my college friends getting adult jobs and moving, I haven't been a very social person outside of my boyfriend. I've decided to make a change and start making more plans with my friends. Last weekend, I met a guy at the bar who was just fun to talk to, and we... I met a guy at the bar who was just fun to talk to and we exchanged numbers. He has a girlfriend. We both agreed it's a platonic friendship, but I don't know how to tell my boyfriend I have a new guy friend. I don't want to hide it from him, but I also don't want him to feel insecure. Is this going to be viewed as cheating? I've always had platonic male friends, but haven't made a new one since we started dating, so I don't know how to mention a new guy. Also, you mentioned on Bachelor you love a giant hill elevator. Well, Dubuque, Iowa has won about two hours from my college town, so please come to a show. Thanks for any advice. A friendly betch. What do you think of this email? 24-year-old woman dating a 22-year-old guy Mm -hmm. decides, I'm going to go out more and be more social, Mm -hmm. meets a guy at the bar who has a girlfriend and seemed like a new friend. What do you think? Okay, so first of all, just I have to do a little mommy time. Right. It's a little mommy time with her. It's okay. And... I want young women to hear me when I say this because as an older woman, I think there's been like a sort of pit against young women and older women. Mm. I want younger women like 22, 23, 24. I want them to focus on finding out what they want in life. Right. right? And, and, and not to let men convince you that you going out and experiencing life and learning life on your own is somehow you, uh, depreciating yourself or or being a whore. I'm not talking about sexually right. just no. fuck all these men. I mean, I want young women to to do cuz I did it, right? I went out there. I know what I like. I got to see life. I got to learn it on my own. It is hard to discover what you want and what you like when you are tethered to somebody and being in a relationship, she is tethered to this young man. And now what has happened is if she's honest with herself, she doesn't want to tell her boyfriend because she probably feels like there is more than just a platonic friendship that she would like from this guy or a feeling that she has for this guy. I could be wrong. I could be right. With that being said, if you are finding guys that you are finding interesting and you're 24 years old, mm-hmm. the, uh, you, this is because you have not experienced different varieties of men, right. people, or experiences. And now you're having a problem, which really should be like a marriage problem, right? Like, you're not right. married to this guy. Why can't you go out and, and date guys and have adventures and, and travel the world and see things and learn, discover things on your own so that you're not worrying about at 24 years old how how do I tell my boyfriend? Right. If you're uncomfortable telling your boyfriend, that has to mean something more. Right. And and that's the thing about this email. It's so 
it's it sounds naive, but I I I, I don't want to give it that word because it feels too negative, because it's just she's like I went out, I met this guy. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of self reflection, because mm-hmm. she's like like I'm with you. Like you you found interest in this guy. Yeah. Let's take it to just her side, just her side. I, there's another part of this, which is the man you met at the bar who has a girlfriend. I don't trust yeah. that he is just exchanging numbers with you on a platonic basis. If we go back to what y- Yamanika said about men and looking to have this asset and trying to like go up, a lot of men will meet. Well, I call it the hookup alley oop. You mm. plant you mm. you th- you pass yourself the hookup in the next relationship while you're in the current one. Yes, yes, yes. Monkey branching, they call it. Is that what they call it? Yeah, and monkey branching. D- d- yeah. Going from vine to vine, mm-hmm. so to speak, yes. and holding onto one vine mm-hmm. and swinging onto the next because yeah. this guy, I don't trust him. I trust her, the emailer, from the mouth of a babe. Like, I I, I, I trust that she's young and, and doesn't sure and hasn't really thought of it and is thinking, oh, it's just a new friend. I haven't, she says I haven't made a friend since my boyfriend. Yeah, because you were in college. You don't make, oh, right. right. you don't make a lot of guy friends out right. in the real world. They, they are, there aren't all these guys at bars just looking for new friends. People are peaking. Let me tell you, no guy is peaking my interest like that in that way. Right. Because I've experienced, I, I, I've had experiences, right? Mm-hmm. Like I've been out there, kind of know what I want. Nothing is, like, oh, here's this guy. You know what I mean? That's just her being a young woman. Right. And I don't know why she won't give herself that. You know, I'm not here to break up a relationship because I know there's people that get married at 21, 22, 23, 24, all that young stuff. I just think that maybe you should think about what you want. That's well, what I really want to say to her is like, what do you, because I've been in relationships in my 30s when mm-hmm. I'm just like, a man could walk in with roses on a unicycle and I'm so into the guy that I, like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't meet him, anybody new with my man. We would, this would be our friend. Right. And then it would be a conversation about, oh, I want to meet your girlfriend. Let's see if maybe we all can hang out. It's those kind of conversations. But at 24, I think she's putting a lot of pressure on herself because it's like this, you like this guy. And you're gonna run into constantly run into guys that you like because you're just now getting out there right. and that and that pool. Well, that, that's a big part of her email. First of all, it's not cheating. You didn't cheat by exchanging numbers with a guy. No, no, you didn't cheat. That's okay. But she has to tell her boyfriend. You got to tell your boyfriend. But she yeah. wrote something very important. I haven't been a very so- social person outside of my boyfriend. That's why she decided to go I mean out about, yeah. to the great big world. And you go. You don't even know what it's like to be social. So you, you haven't hung out with your friends. This is why you hang out with your friends and not go to a bar and meet some random guy. And it's not the 1950s. Right. It, it, it's almost like she's involved in a cult. Like that this guy like was her leader. She didn't get outside of him. She doesn't know what the outside world looks like. And she mm-hmm. goes, oh my God, I met a guy who's interesting, dynamic, fun, smart. Oh my God. And we got along. Yeah, that can happen. That means you're attracted. You know, the best thing that ever happened to me was at 25, I dated a guy who was 14 years older than me. Mm-hmm. And our relationship moved very, very quickly. And um, I was still a virgin at the time. And he made sure, I really had to throw my hat out to him because he he was not pressuring me by my virginity. I mean, we made out here and there, you know what I mean? But he was always just like very protective and like not letting us go to that. And I, I understand that he was very unique in that way because I could have been with any kind of guy that been like, yeah, let me just do this. Hmm. And when I started to have reservations about like, oh, we're moving fast. I felt locked in. I'm like, he had kids. Am I going to be a stepmom? When we finally broke away one of the things that he said to me is he said i want you to go and experience life right you know like he said you should go and like you're you're very naive to certain ways you haven't done a lot you haven't really been out in the world dating wise Mm -hmm. like this was my kind of my first real relationship at like 25 and because of the reinforcement that he gave me i held on to that shit for two more years you understand like i was got i was like nope this is not no, I because I remember what he said, and so it's like it's not my my desire is not to take anything away from this young lady. Right. My desire in telling her this is that I want her to have this 
understanding that she knows herself in and out. That's what socializing is. Because a lot of people, and I tell you, I got girlfriends now in their 40s and in their 50s, even in their 60s. Mm-hmm. And they did things as young women that they regret. Yeah. I wish I hadn't wasted 10 years with this guy. I right. wish I hadn't got married at this point. I haven't, because I see them even when they see me. Well, you know, it's funny because like we're reading this email, we're hearing it, and we're going... It's like we're two doctors. Right. Because we're going, <laughs> she came in going, I have a stomach ache. And right. we're going, yeah, it's the guy you're dating. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, but no, I think I'm pregnant. Right. It's and a, we're it's going, a no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you got young dickositis. <laughs> you got college boyfriend. What is uh, you got, yeah, uh, you got college boyfriend. Oh, yeah, you got college boyfriend. Yeah, you got, you got fuck nigga ears. <laughs> <laughs> what they call it box of ears with a cauliflower ear. <laughs> That's the thing. She came in thinking, oh, am I cheating? And it's like, right. no, you need to break up with your boyfriend. And it's okay. And you need to hang out with your friends. You need to you know, need... And, and for her, for the sake of her boyfriend, right? what we're really saying is you need to know yourself more. And you don't know yourself and you at don't all. Know yourself. You're, you don't know the difference between liking a guy and making a new friend at the bar and you're right. thinking this guy wants a fucking friend. Uh uh-uh. uh. Right. He wants this guy wanted to hook up with you when he's free after he's done with his girlfriend. Right. Or he wanted to cheat with you. Or you right. <laughs> or or he could also just be the cool dude that just wants to be your friend, but you don't have enough tools in your toolbox right. to know whether this is a leak, whether it needs to right. be plugged, you know, cocked up. Right. You have no idea. She's got no taste buds. None. And 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 to get taste buds. You got to hang with your friends. Yeah. You not, you know, not, uh, hey, I got to socialize more. I'm going to go to a bar alone without my boyfriend. Oh, look at me. I'm away from my guy. It's like, no, no, no. Where's the girlfriends? Where are the people you've known your whole life? How Absolutely. do you fill your cup? Absolutely. J- your work dress code might be boring, but your underwear doesn't have to be. Cheer up your wardrobe with fun underwear from MeUndies. They're incredibly comfortable and come in tons of patterns, colors, and cuts. Want underwear with the Toy Story aliens on them? Say no more. How about Grogu? MeUndies has that too. Now listen, I love MeUndies. They're Above all else, they're super comfortable. I love, I love, I love wearing them. It's all I wear. You're going to love them too. And and it is fun to have a fun design on your underwear. It's fun to, you know, it's a big reveal to your partner, to yourself. And honestly, you have a pair of underwear that you're dealing with right now. You have a pair of underwear that you're like, eh, it's okay. Throw it away. Do yourself a favor. That is, uh, you know, that is a, a gift to yourself and your mental health. Nothing is worse than wearing an uncomfortable pair of underwear. Ew. Get more than just junk in your mailbox with a MeUndies membership. Choose a new pair of undies, socks, or a bralette every single month. So every single month you can get rid of something that is old and tired and horrible and replace it with a beautiful MeUndies product. Save up to 30% on any additional purchases and get early access to special deals and new products. To get 25% off your first order plus free standard shipping, visit MeUndies.com slash JTrain. Remember, if you're not satisfied, your purchase is on MeUndies. That's 25% off your first order at MeUndies.com slash JTrain, MeUndies.com slash JTrain. JTrain Podcast at gmail.com, JTrain Podcast at gmail.com. We're here with Yamanika Saunders at Yamanika mm-hmm. on Instagram. Go follow immediately. Every episode you do is a fan favorite. I get so many messages. Well, I this, that. okay, We're you just roasted Mr. Peanut. Yes. Okay, this email is fantastic. Okay. Okay, this is perfect. <laughs> Sisters Bachelorette Roast. Oh, God. <laughs> Jared, you're one of the funniest people on the planet, and I need your help with That's writing true. something. We're we'll one of the funniest people on the planet. This, we are the we are we know we forget that we are in the funniest group. Like there's like you that know we're true, out there yeah. every night doing making the funnies. My sister, who is getting married, is planning to have a bachelorette in Napa this summer. She has asked me to write a roast of her and share it with everyone. 
Although I love to goof around with people in casual settings, I've never roasted someone publicly and I want to keep it lighthearted and fun and bring the laughs, not the tears. I started to write the roast with what I want to say, but I don't even know where to begin. What is your writing process with your jokes? How can I win this bachelorette crowd over? I only know a few of the girls there, so it's tough to gauge everyone's sense of humor. Anything I absolutely shouldn't say or should I say, I massively appreciate any and all feedback you have so okay Mm -hmm. i am i've stayed away from the roast game Mm -hmm. as as a comedian you a professional roaster what advice can you give this person for the roast of their sister at their bachelorette i this also when i hear this i and i'm sure you have this too you're like oh don't do it yeah even as comedians we're not like pushing people towards more roast professional right but since her sisters requested it um she has to do it. Right. You know, you gotta do it. I, I think one of the things, you know, I'm not going to tell you my, my roasting style is very vicious. Okay. And <laughs> I, 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 I listen intently to what people are saying. And then I try to use a little bit of their response. So she's not doing a call and response roasting style. Mm. Like where you're going up against somebody, your opponent is actually going to be silent. Right. Which right. is her sister. And I think the thing that she should do is it's like get those sort of secret sister jokes out there. Get some of those right. inside jokes with the family. Get some dirt on her from her friends. Like really do your research on people that are going to be there and how they have a relationship with her and then make jokes around that. No matter what you do, it's always best that you close up a roast which I like to do with a smile, right? Right. You really close it up and you say like, you know, whatever, Heather, no matter all the things I said about you, you know, tonight have been true. We've seen the worst of you, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't wish myself to have any other sister. I love right. you from the bottom of my heart. You're one of the most amazing people. You've encouraged me through all my... So it's like, give them that. That's what they're going to really want at the end. Right. And for as much dirt as you throw in, there has to be an equal balance. Not mixed in. Because right. people will get confused if you start mixing in positive mm. with the negative. Get all those jokes out. And then at the end, give it a full range of love, devotion, real sincere words to your sister. And that's going to bring the house down. Totally. I, I love that advice. I'm going to add on to it just yeah. based on things she's written. She writes, um, I only know a few of the girls there, so uh, so it's tough to gauge everyone's sense of humor. You don't, don't fuck care. Them. Fuck them. Yeah. It's not about them. <laughs> you zone in on the subject. Mm-hmm. Zone in on your sister. Mm-hmm. It's your sister, your sister, your sister. Make it personal because yes. everyone knows your sister. She is the, the, the spoke of the wheel of everyone there. So whether you know everyone or not, everyone knows your sister. Okay? Venue. Make sure you do it in the proper venue. Back oh, yeah. room of a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Get a place that is that everyone can hear you and see you and see her. Not loud. You don't want people talking. You don't want ambient noise. These are very important things that you're probably not going to think of. You need to make sure you you make sure the venue is good. Make sure you concentrate on the subject. And here's the thing. Anything you know about her, everyone else knows about her. Yeah. Anything, mm-hmm. if she's a clean freak, they all know she's a clean freak. If she's fucked a lot of dudes, they all know she's fucked a lot of dudes. <laughs> if she's never fucked a dude, they know she's never fucked a dude. Yeah. All of these things, and I want you to write these things down. The, uh, how she eats, how she fucks, how she cleans, how what, um, how she is with your mom and dad, mm-hmm. um, how she is with money. Those are five subjects that you can write about right now mm-hmm. that are personal to her that you know that you will have good jokes on because, right. and you know, Yamanika and I. Is she Is she self absorbed? Right. Yeah. These are all the things. Yeah. Uh, now go, move on to her husband, mm-hmm. the fiance. Mm-hmm. Is he good looking? Is he bad looking? Is he is mm-hmm. he tall? Is he short? Is he cheap? Is he is he uh, you know frivolous? Yeah. These are now. These are all. I can't write the joke. We can't write the jokes for you. But right. I can say like all those subjects that I just rattled off. Everyone is going to laugh at them, whether yeah. they're good jokes or bad jokes, because they know the person and they're standing right in front of them. How yeah. they dress, their style. This is all stuff that yeah. I would I would go down the list and, and organize it. And, and that's where that, you start. That, organize that list and then go and then add a few things about herself. I always like to roast myself, too. Right. I always like to get ahead of whatever people are thinking about me. Right. But I think also I would run those jokes mm-hmm. <laughs> by people. 
um, rehearse them if you're not a performer because performance really is all about the performance too and how right. you uh, say the jokes, but also cut off the fat because sometimes jokes can be too long. Here's how you cut wordy. off. Here's how you cut off the fat. Say them out loud. Sometimes you write it down and you go, it sounds good. In, sounding good in your head is never the same as out loud. Right. You got to say them out loud. Say them to someone's face. Yeah. And take the note. It's it, telling a joke is the scariest thing in the world. It feels like you're jumping off a cliff, and when it bombs, it fucking hurts. Oh yeah, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I and everyone when you bomb a joke, it's like I can't believe I thought that was funny, <laughs> and then the crowd is looking and going, I can't believe you, you thought, thought that was funny. Fu- right. <laughs> right. Have you? What's the? What's your favorite roast joke you've ever told? And who oh, was it about? Oh my God. Well, I have so many because <laughs> I love my jokes. Uh, Jamar Neighbor, who I love, we were roasting. Comic uh, from LA. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we were roasting each other on Roast Battle. And I said, Jamar um, is so ugly that his uh, father said Beetlejuice three times before he came. <laughs> And I'm sure I'm saying it okay. not out of the thing, but that was like the that was the funniest thing I had ever said in my life to the point where I had to stop myself from laughing. Well, that's the thing. Looks ones are really fun because the person's right there. Yeah, I was just I just did a show. You got to do this show. You will what fucking. P.S. Jamar's not. Let me. Look. He's a good looking. Jamar is a good looking. But guy, that's the thing. Yeah. You just gave this woman the setup. Like, yeah. they're so ugly. Blankety yeah, yeah, blankety yeah, blank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I just did a show uh, at the Ned Hotel. Have you done this show? No. So Ned Hotel is like this like fancy schmancy hotel and they're doing a show in the upstairs second floor on Wednesday nights, okay? okay? And you know when a show gets a reputation? Yeah. You start hearing about the show or what the type of people that go. So I'm told, they're like, you gotta come to the show. It's all models and like celebrities. Really? And I go, really? Yeah, that's the same exact response. I was like, huh. Because we know yeah. comedy shows aren't usually for models. Right, right. Models don't come to comedy shows to feel at all. good. Right. right. We, we're, we're the audience. We, we, we entertain people who need to feel good. Right. Not people that are like, uh, I get whatever I want when I walk through a door. Exactly. Right. And, right. and whenever there's a model at a show and like it becomes apparent, they are the worst audience in the entire yeah. world. So I get told they're models and and celebrities and high end business people. Okay. So I get to this show and it, they weren't wrong, all really? models. And and it felt it was like promoters. So it felt like they're trying to get this off the ground. And there's some like big money people involved that do promoting around the city for like clubs. Okay. And then they brought people in their rolodex, so to speak. So. I go on stage and everyone's bombing because everyone's everyone's telling them how good looking and rich they are, which we know, like no one right. thinks they're rich, no one thinks they're good looking. Right. So I go on stage and I just do my act and there was a point and it's going better because I'm just concentrating on the jokes. Again, some good advice for you. Don't get rattled by the people in the room. What? Concentrate on the subject. Yeah. So I concentrate on the subject. Do the jokes. They're either in or they're out. I know they, if they work or not. I know how they work. It'll be fine. So I'm doing the jokes and there's this one model in the front who keeps screaming at me even oh, yeah, though I'm ignoring right. them. Right, right, right. They're right. not getting attention. Right, so they I'm, want uh, attention, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm, go- and so I'm scre- kind of screaming over them and trying to go over their head and at one point I'm doing well enough where I'm like, I've gotten the trust of the audience and I stop and I look at the woman I go, you haven't realized that I've ignored you every time you've spoken to me? Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, starts laughing because they had, at this point, heard them get ignored. Mm-hmm. And I go, and I stop the show, I go, this show is so fucking weird. And mm-hmm. like, you know, I come out of the act. And I look to my left and there's a guy who is dressed in all white. He's tall and skinny, all white. He's dressed as, it's, if Where's Waldo <laughs> was wearing all white, he had the stocking cap, White stocking cap, no. white what long sleeve a shirt. Video? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what the fuck is happening? Y'all back I, for the nine nines right. and the old O's? I go, dude, I go, you guys are all crazy. There's all these models. This woman won't shut up. And this guy's dressed as a line of cocaine. <laughs> the whole room turns and looks at him. Yeah. And it's skinny guy in white stocking cap, <laughs> white everything else. And everyone at the same time. Literally at the same time, everyone just broke. Like everyone was like, that is the funniest fucking thing. And I'm laughing because like I didn't, you know, you just say it and you're like, whatever. It's a throwaway line. But when people see the subject. Yeah. 
yeah. and they have it in front of them yes. to go. <gasps> and yeah. it's like you see the puzzle pieces come, come together, together for everyone. Yeah. That's what he looks like. Yeah. Right, they're mm -hmm. all at the same time. That's what he looks yeah. like. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bartender in the back, he's like stopping making a martini. He's like, I was so happy with myself. I was like, I will literally masturbate to that for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the room just going. <gasps> so if you can concentrate on how they yeah. look and present yeah, 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 and yeah. what you're Visual be, is always best. Always mm -hmm. best. So, oh, I'm happy you were here for this email. We Listen. Me too. It was Godson. J Train Podcast at Juma.com. J Train Podcast at Juma.com. Here with Yamanika Saunders. At Yamanika. Go follow immediately. So fucking funny. 24 year old female looking for love. Mm. J Train is a female in my 20s. I have always found dating frustrating. I'm a server, bartender, and MMA fighter. So I get a lot of attention from men, but I've always struggled to find the connection I want. The men I'm attracted to also have a lot of options and don't tr and I don't trust them to want to lock it down and give me what I need in a relationship. I'm very wary of being let on, so I often end up cutting things off early. There are plenty of men who do want to lock it down and give me what I want, but I feel like these are generally people who are less attractive and have less options. And I can I can't force myself to be attracted to a box checker. I find myself attracted to toxic situations despite my better judgment, but I can't choose who I'm attracted to. I'm starting to feel like I'm going to have to sacrifice my feelings if I ever want to have good sex. If I keep cutting things off, I'm going to just end up lonely and horny, which sucks. I feel like I have so much power and so many options until I'm really into someone. Then they have all the power over me. I usually just end up having casual sexual relationships with my female friends, but it's not that the deep romantic connection I really want. I'm open to casual connections, but not in the way guys want to do it. I know this is just the way things work but i would love to hear your thoughts on this gendered conundrum thank you feather feather yamanika what do you think of this email again 24 i mean <laughs> it really is like we the youth i mean 24 right. it's like it's totally fine I, I girls are always sort of put in this position of like wanting uh relationships seeking relationships i mean that's sort of been grounded into our heads right um she's already doing something that's a, a non-traditional i'm sure is also intimidating to men um uh, no you know men are like oh this is a woman that can beat my ass you right know what i mean it's a certain and, look yeah we're assuming it yeah and it's not and i get it like i'm i'm i i feel her because i feel like i am her Mm. You know, like, especially being a female comedian, like the way I, most men cannot outwit me, cannot right. out talk me. I'm not the girl that's <laughs> going to be like, oh, my God, like, um, that's so cute. Like, I'm very direct with men. I'm not, you know, I am a firecracker. Cracker. Right. And, you know, you, you know, funny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a man can't. I, I think a lot of men want this want a woman that's going to make him feel like a man right and i think for women like us because I, I i'm now i'm going to relate myself to her we can't be with men who need a woman to make them feel like a man we need to be with men who are able to be men independent of us right because then we're not um emasculating them because they know how to hold their own masculinity mm. so when she's saying that these guys that she likes has options these guys only have options because the all the women are sort of looking for the same kind of like hot guy but i also believe that it's unfair that women are also conditioned to like, when they go, well, how come you don't like the good guy? And why does the good guy always have to be attributed to being the unattractive or less attractive guy? Like right. there are good guys who are also attractive um, because we don't say that to men, right? We don't go, how come you don't get with the good girl? Like those same guys who are mediocre, like fives or under fives or sixes, they don't seek out girls who are 
their number fives and sixes. Right. I used to tell a joke like back in the day where I go, if a girl is a 10 and I'm a five or six and she's fucking with a guy who's a five or six at a t- and she's a 10, that means I got a fucking nigga that's a negative seven. Right, like right. I need everybody to fuck their number so our balance isn't off. Right. So I do understand what she means. The guys that she's attracted to are the sort of the bad boys. They get the bad boy image because the good, the guys that are like more stable they ain't stepping up to the plate to make themselves look like anything you know you know it's interesting i totally it's interesting the the connection that you have with this woman because i i agree with what you're saying like the idea of like you know i i in, in the way she's worked sex into this do does that speak to you at all oh yeah absolutely because she's she brings sex up and it's interesting that she's like it sounds like a person who's looking for a guy who fucks right. And then she's bringing, and she will not bring her standard down for fucking. But then she's willing to bring her standard down. She goes, I usually just have having casual sexual relations with my female friends. It's not a deep romantic connection I really want. I'm open to casual connections, but not in the way guys want to do it. And it's like, She's already taken it down a notch. Mm-hmm. She goes, I want a relationship, but I'm open to casual connections, but it better be the type of guy who will fuck right and consistently and be in the phone with me. It sounds like she's already lying. It, yeah, I, there's, I think there is some lying to herself. I think there's some uh, settling that she doesn't want to do, but in some parts that she is settling. I, I mean, it's what I said earlier, and I've said, like, if I just want to have sex with a guy, I don't want to be bothered with any of the other nonsense because it's too much. Mm. Unfortunately for women, men, like, I constantly get, um, you know, when guys troll me, the first thing they go is like, oh, well, she's not attractive. She's fat. She's this. No man wants her, blah, 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 blah. Because men get to run their mouths in very sloppy ways about women and depreciate women. Mm. And we don't depreciate, women do not depreciate men in the same way. So what she's tra- tired of doing is she's tired of like having to feel like she has to settle for that guy who's a five right. just because he's not going to break her heart because she's a 10 to him. And we women are constantly asked, uh, you know, as little girls, like, or told, like, you should be with someone who loves you more than they love them. The, women are all, the nobody's telling a little boy be right. with a woman that loves you less than you love her. You know, they never. It's always <laughs> girls. It's right. like chasing. Hey, and, yeah, lo- you gotta let him love you more. You know, right. and so he's gonna it's chase that, you. Yeah, he's gotta, yeah, it's that double standard, and that's why I talk to women. It full, comes full circle again. W- the we women are no stronger than the weakest woman in our group of mm-hmm. women's humanity, right? So as long as there is going to be a girl that is going to let this guy get away with shitting on her, disrespecting her, treating her like nothing, mm-hmm. met, not committing in a relationship, and he knows there's six or seven women available for him to do that, he ain't stopping for a girl that can beat his ass know what she want and just want an equal partner. Right. So it makes it tougher for her, not because of the guys, but because of how low women can be in our standards. Right. And and I think she thinks that, you know, it's interesting. She thinks that like the standards conversation, she thinks that there's, I, I really do think the sex thing is like a big part of this email because she talks about I've always struggled to find a connection I want and I'm attracted to all the men I'm attracted to always mm-hmm. have a lot of options so she's going these sex these 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 I, she's studs she's got to change that too right, right. there she's got to change there's, this, you, there's they, guys they don't have a lot of I'm telling you it's hard I, right. I'm telling you because as a woman I'm doing it and it gets harder as you become older as a woman because it's all the things that break women down are the things that men will depreciate about you right. she has to stop saying that these men have other options or better options well, she's got to only see herself as the op I mean I I really want to make this clear please 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 because when if you as a woman don't think that you're the, if you don't come into a man's life like nigga I'm the best thing you'll ever right. fucking get you will always be in this spindle until you uh, find a guy that you like on all connection levels 
Don't worry about getting into a fucking relationship. Right. If you see a hot guy and he doesn't treat you like you the best thing since sliced bread, fuck him. I guarantee you the more you have that kind of attitude to these niggas and be like, fuck you, the more they'll be like, oh, hold on. Let me put all these girls on the side because there's something about this girl right here that she don't give a fuck about me like that. That's how men are. Well, that's, that's such a great point because and something she's saying in her email is... I can't find there's there's very few guys who will be great at sex with me and a great boyfriend. Mm-hmm. That's what she's saying. Mm-hmm. And now but what you're saying is correct. She needs to start saying there's very for men there's a very there's the same thing. There's very few women out there who will be as good a sexual connection as you are with them. Mm-hmm. So she needs to think of herself as a high Yeah. This is. I don't give a fuck what you look like. Every woman, every person, because this sort of standard that we had of people rating people by numbers mm-hmm. and bullshit like that, it really undermines the thing that makes us beautiful and the way that God made us is when you connect with somebody on a pers- personal level, right? Aside from the aesthetics, I mean, I'm also not a good person to talk to because I've liked some guys that I definitely know. You know, the last guy was with his teeth looked like a knife and fork set. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, there was something about his personality right. that I like. But and that's he became important. attractive to me. De- we develop a track. And that's not me saying you got to settle for an ugly guy. What I'm saying is sometimes when you get that vibe right, that person becomes the most attractive to you because of the things about them that turn you on that's outside of aesthetics. But, but that's the whole point is you're, you're talking about like a specific vibe. What a lot of women write into here with in this conversation is mm-hmm. they go, it's so hard for me to find someone like this. That's why they get attracted and they go, it's always so hard for me to meet someone new. It's as hard for that guy on the other side to mm-hmm. get the vibe that you're getting. Mm-hmm. So you have to trust that. So you only get this vibe with me if you do right by me. Right. And I think she needs to start believing that a little bit more where it's like, you yeah. know, both sides if it's a match physically, mentally, that chemical you can't explain, you have to also understand that it's them, it's their match too that is difficult to find. And yeah. she's got to understand, like, you know, she's because she's saying, if I lose this toxic guy, I won't be able to find the next better guy. And it's but like, there's not, they're not all, t- c- right? Because, like, you know, some of my exes, I'll say this, right? Like, at the end of the day, who, wh- wherever they went, they 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 went mm. right, and I think for women, we often think like, um, you know, I can't have it all, right? Mm. And you have to understand that some guys can give it all, and some guys can't. And I think women need to refocus where they get their validation from, mm-hmm. because as long as I mean, it is something very validating about getting a guy who is hot and all the girls like and is sexy, getting him to like and choose you, then you feel like the bell of the ball. Right. But women have to find a way to redirect trying to get their validation from men, validate themselves, and that will keep you more open to being patient. Mm. Because I do think she's concerned about sex here. I'm not 100% sure that she really is in a place where she wants a relationship I always question that with young women because I know how much they prey on young women to be in relationships and I know a lot of guys like to groom young women into being the woman for them that they need Um, but I would question whether she really even wants to be in a relationship as much as she just wants uh, a good fuck buddy that she can lean on every now and And, then and respect Mm -hmm. I think that's the big thing is like this open communication and respect that like comes with sex and whatever this is yeah i I agree with you the relationship aspect is like something she's probably leaning on because it's just a word to use yeah you know where it does seem like she's like i'm i'm fucking these guys who i can't get a call back from and it's like what the fuck that puts you in a tailspin And, and, and and it's so important for me to say this and to say it again There's nothing wrong with being a wife and there is nothing wrong with being a a mother. There's nothing wrong with even wanting those things. I, but I really want these women, these young women, older women, I want women to understand you are more Mm. than what you are 
to a man or attracting men. Mm -hmm. And I think when women start to really focus in on themselves and what they like to do and where they, you will start to meet the men who are in a space where you belong because you've put yourself there. Right. And instead of saying, I'm looking for the guys who who fuck good. Right. I fuck good. Or, the go- or let me go to, because I see the girls, my, my girlfriend, oh, we got to go to a sports bar. Let's go to 40-40 club. With the- it's like, bitch, you don't like football. <laughs> you know, why are you going to right. a lumberjack, yo? You don't like lumberjack shit. Right. You over at Home Depot. You don't like no. Da- it's like, Do the shit bitch, you like. be where you are. I get Men are everywhere. Right. Bitch, you like a Chardonnay paint and sip and sea party? Right. Guess what? It's going to be a man at the paint and sip and sea party. You be like, oh, I met the man at the cooking. Like, so go meet the man. Go meet. You like a yeah. Forever 21? Right. Bitch, keep going to Forever 21. Is the man in Forever 21? Uh, randomly. And you'll be like, right. how'd you end up here? He'll be like, I heard there were women here. Right. Stop going to find and seek a man and let God. And I know a lot of people don't believe in God. So we'll say universe, but I'm saying God. Let God order your steps mm. to find your man. That's why I'm, this is where I'm at. I have been in so many abusive, emotionally abusive relationships. And I have to be honest about that because I'm such a strong woman. So for women, when they when I talk about those things and they go, wow, you? I go, yeah. Because most of the men who get with me, the first thing their job is, is to break this strong, independent woman that I am. And they tell me I ain't shit. They tell me I've been told I was a fat bitch. I'm worthless. I ain't nothing. Oh, no man wants me. I talk like this. I act like that. And I let men beat me down mm. to the point where I lost who the fuck I was. Now that I've recaptured who I am, I'll never let a motherfucker do that again. So for me, yeah, I'm getting older. I'm fine with being alone. I'm fine with never being a mother, never being a wife. I've asked God, if that is not in the cards for me, I want him to take that desire away from me. If it's in the cards for me, it's never too late for it to be in the cards for me. But what I understood as a woman, what I needed to get that I didn't get when I was younger is that I need somebody who sees me. And I see them. So one part of people seeing you is that, yeah, there will be a lot of guys when you start to discover who you are that are going to see you that you're not interested in. But there will be guys that will see you, see your glow, see your growth, see that there's something about you that you have your shit together. But it may be a smaller portion of those guys. But wait right. until you happier. got some right. There's nothing wrong with waiting until there's somebody that also piques your interest. And just because you are not seeing that consistently and all the time, doesn't mean that it's never going to happen. You're 24 years old, my mom. Right, right. You're enjoy gonna, enjoy yeah, that enjoy, time. Enjoy your friends. I always say I use this metaphor for social media, but I think the way you're putting it right now, it makes sense for this. You're throwing a party. It's yeah. the Yamanika party. Yes. We're all dancing to the music. Mm-hmm. You, you throw a great party. It's a fun party. It's a party anyone should want to be at. Absolutely. Also, there's a lot of parties on the block. Absolutely. And those are good parties, too. Yes. If someone shows up to your party and starts dancing, you're going to be like, this is a great person. They like my party. They should be happy to be here. If someone walked in the party and was like, yeah, I don't know, can we turn down the music? Right, like, right. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. <laughs> Right? This is the music I play. And it's like, uh, and it, you know, if, if someone comes to your party and goes, yeah, I don't, I, I haven't texted you in a while. You'd be like, you haven't texted in a while? Get the Get fuck out of here. This, you didn't confirm? I love this. I love this party. Analogy. You didn't confirm yeah. the party? Yes. I sent you an invitation. We a fool for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're eating a lot of pussy in this party. <laughs> There's no pussy for people who don't confirm. You, you didn't get a pussy plate? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. You didn't even answer the, 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 the uh, what's the, the party, the invite? What's the, the email? RSVP. You didn't answer the, right, the paperless right. post? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't, put, we didn't bring enough pussy for you. Oh, we got to get you out of here. Right. Yeah, you got to go. Security. Oh, get them out. <laughs> get them out. This, right. but this is what you're talking about. Like, there's yeah. a power in saying, this is my party. My party, yeah. And you come in, you're free to dance. The door is literally unlocked. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't respond to the paperless post? Yeah. Wow, we don't have enough pussy. Right. 
Beat it. And then Beat it. And, the, and that's also the person you would never entertain. Not even right. so much like yeah, you just like you you going over here and going over there. You would never even entertain that person. That's what so, you go, Oh, you're not having a good time? Oh, sorry about that. See right. you later and go right. back to the party. Someone comes to your house with a with like with a grimace. Right. You'd be like, What, what you're ruining the vibe. Yeah, Get out of here. Beat it. J Train yeah. Podcast at gmail.com. Mm, J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Yamanika. Yeah. You come on here this podcast and you just make it perfect. <laughs> I want everyone to go follow Yamanika at Yamanika. For, for, we got time for we got time for a couple more. You got time for a couple? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Cuz we have some really good ones. There's yeah. one with a I'm I'm giving a pre-trigger warning. Okay. Not for this one, the next one. Okay. But just beware. beware. Okay. Former situationship turned uh former situationship to future boyfriend. Jared, an esteemed guest. I had a situation ship back in 2015. Woo, we're going back in time. <laughs> back then, after a few dates, he said he didn't have the time to date me the way I deserved. But I was dumb and continued to hook up. No sex with him for about two months after. All right, I, w- I would take away the dumb thing. You hooked up, whatever. Um, things ended when I finally got sick of it, as, mm-hmm. as we all do. Mm-hmm. We reconnected recently and have been taking things very slowly, about a date every other week. We've both had a few week-long vacation since. Over the past two months, uh, no, I'm, I've read this terribly. Things... <laughs> this is like... Oy, this, don't show this to my fifth grade reading teacher. Uh, we reconnected recently after and have been taking things very slowly over the past two months. Okay, so there's been, mm-hmm. uh, so it's two months of reconnecting, date every other week. They've both had week long vacations. We finally had sex for the first time. We had a condom accident, and he texted me the following day following up on that, but didn't set a date for anything in the future. We've always had kind of a lax text exchange because I'm not great at responding to texts in a timely manner, thanks ADHD, but I'm not. Not sure if this is it is he still interested in dating me if he hasn't made plans two days later did he only want to sleep with me i know you've said that whatever past relationship you had with a guy is where you're at further down the road but things felt different this time with him thanks for all your amazing advice so what do you think so 2015 is eight years ago at this mm-hmm. point they mm-hmm. reconnect um mm-hmm. they have dates every other week mm-hmm. have sex she feels a vibe change. Do you think it's salvageable? What should she do? I think women romanticize what men have going on more than they should. Right? I She's totally doing, agree. He's going to tell you everything. The fact that you had a pregnancy scare and he just called to check up on if you were pregnant or not. Right. Um, and then said nothing else. Didn't have any like words of like if you were pregnant, what would that mean? Or mm. conversation. I think let it go. Somebody you're having dates with every other week. Don't waste your time. Um, and you can't. You think let him go? I think she should let him go. Mm. Absolutely. I think that. Um, and I'm also an ADHD girl. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I know you know. Hopefully she's taking medication for that because those voices in your head, girl, tell you all kinds of shit. You be talking for that guy and have no idea what's happening <laughs> in real reality. I also don't think he. You know, I, I know it's hard. It's a it's a tough market out there. But I want women to go back. And this is not me being approved, by the way. Okay. Yes. No. But I want women to go back to the sacred sacredness of their body mm. right and your body is a is a sanctuary and not everybody gets to come into your party right. and so for somebody to be comfortable with seeing you every other week and you're talking about relationships what kind of relationship is that right where you can go if you can go a whole week without seeing me and you can barely text me it means you're not really in committed into this relationship and we've already been there done that right i i think it's like uh i i totally agree with you where it's like been there done that Mm -hmm. because the you know and the romanticism thing that you said is is perfectly true because it's like it's not that deep you know like he came back to you because he was like yes she was hot Mm -hmm. i'm attracted Mm -hmm. she's attracted to me Mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna go back to the party right and and then he kind of took it a little bit lax you know every other week and and sometimes that happens you go back to people when you're bored you're looking for attention. Mm-hmm. You, and I think in his mind he's going, maybe it could work, right? And I think from his end he comes back to you not thinking like, oh, this is someone I gotta have sex with. I think it's more him thinking, 
oh, this is someone who is attracted to me and I'm attracted to them, so maybe I could make it work. I, I don't think it's as diabolical as it seems. I think he's, I think she can make, he can make her settle for what he's giving her. He's breadcrumbing her. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a little bit of reinforcement to make sure she's not going. I would say, like, where is he having sex? Because <laughs> you think he's a guy and he's having sex every other week just with you? Like, well, you I, don't, I don't, I don't think... It's tough because I want to say to her like, I she's probably likes him too. She's probably like or she's she, having. She the, likes him enough to write this and get information. Right, on, and from and you. I think her conversation with herself is the same as his conversation with himself. I think Let it's like what happened then? Why didn't Jared, we get together? I don't ever want to speak to my eight year ago self because I done, <laughs> I done moved on. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the things about me in a relationship when I break up, I take them very very hard. It takes me a long time. I've had mm. exes that's taken me two, three years to get over. Mm -hmm. Once I'm over them, I'm done. None of my exes, I, I have an ex that I talk to off and on. Um, I've entertained hooking up with him just on just like, you know, like, oh, let me get my rock real quick. Right. But I would not go back into a relationship with any of my exes. I would not repeat because there is a reason why you're not with that person. Do not right. go back to spoiled milk. Do not go back to an old apartment. Do not go back to an old job. Do not go back to an old man. Eight years ago, you were in a different space, in a different mind. Right. I would want to see. I know this girl has grown in eight years. I right. know she's. And that's the thing that's piqued his curiosity with his little stingy ass is he's come back. He's seen the woman she's developed into, but he knows that there's still a part of her insecurity that will allow her to take crumbs from them. Right. And don't do it, girl. You are better than that. Shake them off. Right. And she needs to dump him. Yeah. I think that's a big dump part him, of this. Right. You got to dump that, him. You, that closure. There's going to be a closure. Close that door and go no, no He's contact. never going to give you closure. He's no. going to go, no, well, I thought, well, we, you know, I just want to, I was, I, I thought maybe we could, and I'm not, bu I'm busy right now. No, 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 no. You need to say, hey. You made me feel like shit after mm -hmm. we fucked. That's enough for me to go, no. No. I'm done. Right. And you got to do the breakup. And it takes up, but it takes. It's hard. It's really, and I want, I, I don't want any woman to see me and think like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, I come on here a lot. I have been the woman with low self-esteem. I have begged a man. I have cried. I have done all of those things. So mm. I understand what happens when you like somebody or you fall in love with somebody. That's why at this point in time, I'm very protective about who I will give my heart to and who I'll give my love to. It has to be somebody that is going to handle that shit with care. Right. And you know if a guy is going to handle your shit, even for guys, you know if a woman's going to handle your shit. It's it's how they take care of you in the in the beginning. But also be very, very wary because there's this thing that narcissists do, people who have narcissistic personality disorder, and I dealt with somebody who had narcissistic personality mm. disorder and psychopathy, complete mental job, nutcase, is at the end of the day, they can love bomb you. So you have to. You're like look be for fortified. You have to, you be, yeah, you have to. You it's it's hard. It's very tricky because you. So a lot of times we think we found the person that really really loves us, and it's a love bomb. It's not real love. So you have to have intuition. You have to um, really think things through. You have to be very careful who you give your heart to because a lot of people will take your heart. And fuck around with it. Well, he kind of did. If you think about yeah. this situation, like the more I think about it, and and the more he kind of fucked up. It's it's kind of fucked up because he's going. I I know this person liked me enough because she said when I finally got sick of it, things ended. So you hooked up in 2015. You were like, I'm sick of it. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of knew that. He just let her go. And let her go. Yeah, he let and her then go. he comes back into your life slowly. To see Even if she's still the same woman she was eight years right. ago. Right. And you go, and now you're taking me on dates. It's not like they went out, mm -hmm. got drunk, and fucked. Like, that would actually be okay. Mm -hmm. It. This was a, oh, we go on date one and date two. And then the minute I need to feel like I've made the right decision after we've been together physically, you drift away. And it's I'm like telling he, you she doesn't I would, like him. I'm right, telling you, deep down inside, she he, does not like him. She wants validation right. because it's like, can I get the guy that is being aloof with me? And right. what I'm going to tell her right now is the most powerful feeling she will ever have is to do what you said, let him go. Because then you will know that you are in a better place um, emotionally and with yourself than you were eight years ago. And he's as confused as he was as back he, yeah, then. Yeah, he's never matured. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. 
We're here with Yamanika at Yamanika Saunders at Yamanika. Yamanika mm-hmm. Saunders is here at Yamanika. Go follow. Okay, so this is the uh, trigger warning for eating disorders. Okay, eating disorder trigger war- trigger warning. Um, it's a ridiculous email. Even though I'm giving a trigger warning, mm-hmm. it's like kind of ridiculous. We're gonna read it. Ready? Okay. Barnyard sounds at the dinner table. I'm happy you gave a laugh at first because it is ridiculous. Right. Okay. I think I know where this is going to go. Jared, an esteemed comedy guest. Feather, feather. Love the pod. Hope to see you live ASAP. Hoping you have some words of wisdom for a situation I'm struggling with involving my mom. Mm. Background. I'm 32 and up until a few years ago, I was anorexic. Struggled for... Uh, wait. I'm now with it for 15 years. But through fa- therapy, I finally got up to a healthy weight. I'm now working with a doctor doing ketamine therapy to curb invasive thoughts about my weight and it's made a huge difference well we're very happy yes, for you that you found a therapy that's working Absolutely. for you my mom is a therapist and knows i've had an eating disorder we recently went out to dinner and i ordered guac and chips as an appetizer we ran out of chips so the server offered to refill i said sure thanks and internally celebrated how far i've come mm-hmm. i felt so proud of myself here's the issue as soon as the server walked away my mom turns to me and says oink oink and laughs that's like insane mm-hmm. i said mom that's a flag i've asked you not to make pig sounds at me while i eat before I can't hear that shit. Hey, before, so this has happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this is, for it to happen once to me, as crazy as it sounds, mm-hmm. is in a movie where I'm like, that's bad writing. Okay. She replied with an eye roll and said, oh, I forgot you're so sensitive and I have to completely change the way I speak around you. And I angrily, I angrily replied, yeah, you do. And we moved on from the conversation. It really stuck me how messed up the whole thing was. After a few weeks taking some time to think, I emailed her and asked her to do therapy with me since the two of us talking has never changed this type of behavior from her. To my surprise, she said no because she's too emotionally exhausted. So now I have no idea what to do. I want to continue being close to her, but not if she can't change the way she speaks about people's bodies, weight, and my eating disorder. Any advice on how to move forward or what boundaries I could set? This is, uh, like, to me, I said it's a ridiculous, it's a Mm mother-daughter. You're making oink, oink noises at someone with a eating disorder. Like, is this crazy? The fact that her She's mother a knows that she, her daughter suffers with anorexia and is going through treatment and is also a therapist, um, it, her mother is disgusting. Right. That's absolutely disgusting. And what happens is, and I hate to keep throwing narcissists around, you know, her mother may be suffering from narcissistic personality disorder. Why would you do that to your daughter? And right. why would you not be sensitive about that? Um, it is... Um, her mother probably doesn't want to go to therapy, nor let me just tell you something. Also, if your mother is a narcissist, going to therapy with her is not going to help. Right. I think what happens is we have to get to a point in our lives where we're okay with letting go of people that don't serve us and don't help our mental and spiritual um, growth and sanity. And sometimes that means we have to get rid of our parents. Right. And and it just is, and I'm not saying that lightly. I'm saying I'm at the point where I don't mind getting rid of my parents. Do you understand right. what I'm and, saying? And knowing where they fit in your life and Absolutely. where they don't. Absolutely. I've told my, I've had a conversation. Um, I mean, I love my mother and my father. There are boundaries that I have set with both of them. Mm. And there's boundaries that they've set with me. And if somebody disrespects your boundaries, it's one thing to forget or go, catch yourself it's another thing to go oh you're being sensitive right which is uh problematic and i think that she has to also look at where the eating disorder came from somewhere right Right. we're not born with eating disorders we develop them for a lot of reasons their eating disorders are a part of coping mechanisms to have Mm -hmm. control um for many years and a lot of people don't know this and this will be the first time uh i ever share this and I guess it's apropos to share it on this podcast, I was bulimic for many years. Mm. And that came from me um, having low self-esteem. That came from me wanting to control 
how much I ate, knowing right. that I needed to eat to make myself feel happy because I never felt happy. I was super depressed. and But I did not want to um, get any fatter than I was. Right. And that kind of stuff needed, I needed gentle care um, with the people who ha- had access to that information. And it's a very hard thing to overcome. And it does things not only to your mental health, but also does things to your physical health. So... The fact that her mother would not know how important that is to recover from an eating disorder like that is problematic. It's it's interesting because I as I'm reading this email, you you mentioned narcissism and being a narcissist. I didn't think of it that way, but I when you said it, I was like, oh yeah. Because as I was reading, I was like, oh, I was like thinking of like the most empathetic, you know, uh, way I could think of the mother. As as much of an evil villain she is in this email, I was like. Well, I guess in her mind, she's been dealing with this for years and years and years. But that's a narcissism Mm -hmm. to go, oh, again, this is, again, my daughter's eating disorder is happening to me. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a narcissist. Mm-hmm. I never, I, I never thought a reflection of her, right, right, and but not in a positive way, right, not in a way that her daughter can look like any, you know, be big or small, and she have love for the daughter. It's this now conditioning to um, make sure that the daughter is not going this way, right, but right. in an abusive way, and in a way that really exposes her daughter out in public like that is crazy. It's crazy, and and I again, it's like. Hey, we're just not going to do dinner anymore. I want to spend time with you, mm-hmm. but you've ruined that. You mm-hmm. again to go back to the party analogy. I'm having a party. I, I'm ordering chips. I'm 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 putting out chips, and you're and you know what happens at this house. You know how this house works, and you're saying oink oink at right. the table, like right. when you know, like it's almost like you're trying to test me yeah. at my own yeah. event, and it's like. I guess you don't get to get to know me on this basis. We're going to yeah. be mother daughter. We're not going to be absolutely. And, and that's sad, but it's also a relief. I would. Uh, it's it not could be sad a, because oh, oh, she'll start get, distancing from her mom. My, right? My, she tried. Yeah, that's the thing. She tried. It's not like she didn't try. Well, she can. Okay, I'll use my mother and I as an example. Yeah. There's certain things I my, I do not want my mother to talk about with me. Right. Just off the like more more like fa- certain family members. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's talking, like I just don't want to be right. like I don't want to hear. It. And my mother will still. What what happens? She goes, you know, if you mind if I, I say this about so and so and so, or if I tell you that, I, and I go, oh, the only way my mother's gonna get it is is when she does that. I have to just go complete silence. Mm. Or I have to go, all right, Ma, I'll call you later. Click. Right. So now she doesn't do it. Right, because if she wants access to right. you, she knows right. that is a non-starter. Right. If you want to stay on the phone with me, right. don't do or it's click time. Right. And you know, most mothers want relationships with their daughters. Absolutely. So you have to understand, like the you know, the listener, the person that's watching on YouTube, like you have you have value in this situation. Mm-hmm. Your your mom does want to hang out with you. She's at dinner with you. Mm-hmm. There's a reason she's and there. And if your mom doesn't, that's even more a reason to get away from your mother. Easier. Then then it's all simplified. But now your mom wants to come to dinner. She knows the rules. And it's like the idea of like, I when she gets back to you and says, I'm exhausted by this, it's like, okay, so then we're not going to exhaust ourselves. I'm not going to try and change you. But I'm also not going to be at dinner with you. This is... Right, absolutely. Right. So, right. so we're right. Le- both of us are less exhausted. Because... and. This is a sad, I mean, this is a sad tale. This is like, I, I, also, it's so extreme. I, I can't believe it, but it's, I guess I can I mean, believe it's that it. that mother-daughter thing sometimes that happens. Sometimes mothers are jealous of daughters, vice versa. I mean, it's, I, I feel bad for her because I can only imagine going through all of that. I can't believe her mother did that. But I also want to say that we got to stop, and I'm not saying she's doing this, but as a collective, we have to stop acting like people who are therapists and psychiatrists are not also people who need therapy <laughs> right. and psychiatry. <laughs> right, 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 right. And she's probably saying that to her, well, I, you know, it's like right. she's probably self-therapizing in her own yeah. hero way. You know, she's going, well, I, yeah, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck this mom. Podcast at gmail.com, Podcast at gmail.com. We got one more. You ready? I'm ready. At Yamanika on Instagram, TikTok, everything. Go follow. So funny. Is it normal for guys to not come? Love all things Jared. I'll get right to it. I've been dating this guy for about six months now. I'm 28. He's 30 next month. We met on Hinge. The first few months were fun, but our 
The first few months were fun, but our incompatibilities have been starting to show. I'm wondering if I'm seeing them more than he is, though. Anyways, my question is, is it normal for guys not to finish? First perspective, he's not finished more frequently than he has. It seems like it's happening more recently the past few weeks. We've talked that we haven't had sex haven't we've talked that we haven't been having sex as often as we both like. Our social lives aren't so compatible at times and it's hard to find the time. But even after we planned an intimate night, he still didn't finish. I realize that society puts pressure on men to always finish, that it's okay if, if girls don't. But the frequency of this is just just not typical for me. I ask if there's anything I did or if there's anything I can do to help. He says it's not me and he's just too in his head. But it's hard to not take this personally at this point. Like, hello, I'm naked on top of you. Or to overthink that even our physical life isn't compatible. Anyways, how often does this actually happen? How much can a guy really overthink coming? Is this something that will pass or is this a larger issue and we're just not meant to go on? Thanks. I'll finish this email, but my boyfriend won't. Love the sign off. What do you think? I hate to do this again. Okay. You're going to break up another relationship? <laughs> I know. I'm not here. It, it, I need to know more. You right. Know, I need to really know the dynamic to give an honest answer. But I will say this because I have become sort of an expert in narcissistic personality mm-hmm. disorder, which I want people to understand is very different than just being a narcissist. Uh, I'm talking about the cluster B personality disorder, um, narcissism. Um is that oftentimes in relationship with narcissists in the beginning, it's very good and it's hot and it's heavy. And then it becomes a control thing and a devaluing thing for them Mm. to start to withhold or act as if they are not able to um, perform Mm -hmm. uh, in certain ways. So like the, there's something going on there. I just don't have enough information. If, if, if he's not able to, um, reach a climax with you, you should get away from him. But it's only <laughs> going to, it's right, because it's only going to tear down her right. self esteem. You know, and it's I've, not going to get better from here. No, it's not going to get better. And it's like, I've been, you know, one of the most painful experiences I ever was in in a relationship was a guy who tried, who started withholding intimacy from me mm-hmm. and started making me feel like I could not ask for intimacy and that he was the one that had to dictate it. And then going to bed at nights with him where I would be like in a nighty or like nothing and he wouldn't touch me at all. Mm. It starts to make you feel bad. And it's a part of a control thing. I don't want to say that this is that because I don't, I don't know what his real interaction with her about this whole thing. Cause he could just be embarrassed, but I just, I, I would warn like anybody who you are not having a great sexual relationship with, and there's no way of making it better. Cause I'm not the type of person that thinks you can't learn. Right. I think when you get with a partner, even if they're the best in bed, they still have to learn your body. They have to still right. learn things about you and you guys have to learn to have great sex together. It, yeah. And she never mentions whether she's coming. Right. She never mentions she, just is worried about his cum status i listen i will say this about myself i'm not a doctor we've had urologists on the show and i i forget his name right now but he was on you up podcast and he talked about like the one thing he he said that a lot of this is mental Mm -hmm. and he brought up uh if someone's watching a lot of porn that this is kind of a result of that and But he never, and he goes, there's, you know, he brought up some medical things, so I'm sure this guy could go to a doctor, and I'm not Mm -hmm. a doctor, I'm not. But I will say this about my own life and my own cum status. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that when I'm at my health, when I'm doing well, Mm -hmm. physically, mentally, Mm -hmm. penis works. Right. I'm cool. When I'm not doing well, I can't come or I come too quick. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like the barometer of where I am physically and mentally. Right. That makes sense. So, you know, and I've and I've only noticed that looking backwards where Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, I was a a good partner then. And I was something was off about me then. But it was really again, when I couldn't come, it was drinking too much. Mm -hmm. Right. When I when I was too sensitive, uh, I was watching too much porn or, Mm -hmm. you know, not really. You know, that excited, desensitizes, you. desensitizes yeah. or yeah. made. You know what I mean? Like I was, I was, I, I wasn't the best version of myself. I was, I was, uh, or, or when I was 
not able to you know get going it was because oh the whole oh you you weren't right physically when you were drinking six nights in a row right (laughs) right like what did you expect right and when she said she wrote something very specific in her email she was like we're on two different social calendars Mm -hmm. and it's like okay so what is he getting up for is he getting up for and getting up as a pun intended i guess but what is he mentally physically gearing up towards is it date night with you Right. Or is it for the other things and then you're kind of a side dish? Right, 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 right. And the other things don't have to be other women. They could Mm -hmm. just be, I do, I like to want, I want to go get fucked up and do bad things for myself. And then I have a girl that I hang out with also. Right, right. So I think this is something to like unpack is what I'm saying. Like, because I notice it in me. Mm -hmm. Like I've looked back on certain situations where I'm like, man, I, I was a worse lover. Right. (laughs) Because I was looking to eat or drink right, or watch right, porn. Right, right, you know? right, so true. and you go yeah. and so uh, back to what you're saying is like this might not be the guy for you because he might not be totally as invested as you. Mm-hmm. Like you're there being like how do we make this yeah, this like, wood, you, well, we you know, don't mean shit because like and and she said in the beginning. She was like it was it wasn't like they didn't have great sex right. and good good times and he so whatever's happening with Some, you, Papa, uh, you he got I mean? comfy cozy. Yeah. So that, that's the thing. Maybe he's gotten too. And I've had this. And um, listen, I'm speaking from my personal life where I go, man, I was so comfy cozy in this whatever this was that mm-hmm. I became lazy with it. And I wasn't a good partner. And you go, oh, that mm-hmm. that directly goes to the penis. I've, absolutely. Yeah. So the penis is like almost like this. It's almost like a temperature check. Like. If the penis ain't hard, it, there's you know it's too cold in the room. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a, it's a it's a living breathing barometer. Absolutely. So and and I'm not. This is a. I've never said this. I'm usually one to be very empathetic to the penis, because I do I do think like there's good times, bad times. It's like a baseball pitcher. Right. Sometimes pitcher get rocked. Right. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes yeah. he's throwing all strikes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And again, I think it's less. Um, we're less in control of it than maybe men imply, but I will say that I've noticed this. As I get older, because, you know, as they say, you know, mm-hmm. as you get older, you know, 25, mm-hmm. I could be in a back alley. Well, let's make it happen. Right, right. You know, right, maybe it's right. a little different now. Right. And I'm noticing the connection between mind, body, physical, yeah. and penis. She's got to do something because you ain't trying to keep pouring penis in your pussy. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this no, it's what, worn out penis. Yeah. No, I don't want a couple of penis. No. Go get your shit together. <laughs> Call me when you get it together. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Yamanika. Another classic. Oh, You're my the God. Best. Everyone go follow Yamanika at Yamanika. Everything she does is fantastic. You're you want to so sweet. Jared. You want to be involved in the Yamanika. I always used to say this in the podcast back in the day. I'd be like, you get the rookie card. <laughs> and I'd be like, you get to know Yamanika when. You know, yeah. you get to watch the Super Bowl commercial like I did and go, yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. So go follow. I love Yamanika. I'm Jared Man, Freed. I love being here. Thank it's the you. the best. At Jared Freed, JTrain Podcast, gmail.com. Back next week. Boom.